Okay, so I want to talk to you about mutually exclusive events. So if two events are mutually exclusive, this means that they can't happen at the same time. So if they can't happen at the same time, we actually know a bit about what their Venn diagram would look like. We know that their loops would have to be separate from each other because they can't overlap. If they overlapped, then they could be happening at the same time. So if um, A and B are mutually exclusive, then the probability of them both happening at the same time is zero because that's their def definition. They can't happen at the same time. And if you wanted to find the probability of A or B, remember to do that, you would just find the probability of A and you shade it, the probability of B and you shade it. So finding the probability of A or B is just going to be the probability of A plus the probability of B. It's nice and simple. So what might mutually exclusive events actually look like? Well, I've got a couple of examples here. So you could say the events picking a heart from a standard deck of cards and picking a diamond from a standard deck of cards are mutually exclusive. Because if you pick a heart, you can't pick a diamond at the same time because you either have a diamond card or a heart card. They are never the same suit at the same time. And I've got another one here. If nobody in our maths class studies drama, and I don't think anyone does in our class, then the events studying maths and studying drama are going to be mutually exclusive for our class because we can't have anyone who is studying both of those two things. OK, um, so there are two things that cannot happen at the same time. There is another type of event that we need to talk about, which are called independent events. Now, if two events are independent, and this one's a bit more confusing, then whether one event happens does not affect the probability of the other happening. So if they are independent from each other, they do not affect the probability of the other one happening. And I've put a really important note here. I've said that independence does not affect how the circles interact in a Venn diagram. So whilst a mutually exclusive one, you can see the circles don't overlap, independent events, it's just going to look like a normal Venn diagram. We can't tell unless we do some other test. Now, if they are independent, then the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. Um, so that's probably stuff we've come across that before. Like if you roll a dice and it's saying, what's the probability of getting a five and then another five? Well, those events are independent because if you get a five one time, it's not going to affect if you get a five another time. So getting two fives would just be a six multiplied by a six, which is one out of 36. Anyway, we'll be doing some more practice with those kinds of things later. First of all, I wanted to decide whether I think whether you think these events are independent, dependent, meaning not independent, or maybe or kind of a maybe that we might have. So I'm gonna give you a couple of seconds now to read through these. I want you to pause the video and to decide whether you think they are independent, dependent, or mm, not sure. Okay, so this first one that I've got here, we've got these two events, A and B. A says that being in a car accident and B is riding in a car to work. Well, I think that these events will affect the other one. For example, if you ride in a car to work, there is a higher chance that you're going to be in a car accident. It doesn't mean you will be in a car accident, but it means that it's going to affect the probability of that one happening. So this one is going to be de dependent. In other words, it is not an independent event. Now I'm going to have a look at the second one I've got over here. Winning a scratch card and winning the lottery. Well, these things, I hope you have realised, they are going to be independent from each other. Because if you go to the lottery and you put your six, six numbers in and you buy a scratch card, they're not going to interact with each other at all. Some people might think they've got, oh, I'm feeling lucky today. They must be linked to each other. But they are totally independent events. Those probabilities are independent from each other. Third one I've got here. Running out of petrol on a journey and forgetting your umbrella on a rainy day. OK, well, these sort of feel a bit like these ones. These are two where you're lucky. These are two where you are unlucky. But these are not related to each other at all. So these are indeed going to be independent. They're not going to be interacting with each other. You may feel like you've had a bad day if your petrol runs out in your car and you may feel like you've had a bad day if you've um, left your umbrella at home. But they're not going to be related to each other. They are completely independent. OK, this one that we've got over here, parking your car without checking the restrictions and receiving a parking ticket. 
Well, these are definitely going to be related to each other. So it's not independent. It is a dependent thing. If you're parking your car without checking restrictions, that's going to change your probability about whether you're going to receive a parking ticket. And then the fifth one I've got down here, going skiing in France and breaking a bone in your arm. Well, I think that these are going to be dependent. I think these are not independent. They are dependent because if you go skiing, there's probably a higher chance that you're going to break a bone in your arm. It doesn't mean that you will, but it probably means you're putting yourself at risk. So those events are likely to not be independent. They are probably dependent events. OK, this one that we've got here, having a maths degree and getting a job in the civil service. Well, this one, I'm actually going to say we are not sure and we might want to do some investigation into this to find out is there a relationship between if someone has a maths degree and whether they get a job in the civil service? Are they going to affect each other? So this one would require some investigation. And the way you would investigate that would be finding out the probability that someone has a maths degree, the probability that someone gets a job at the civil service, and the probability that someone has a maths degree and works at the civil service. And you would check this relationship up here to see if they were independent. Maybe they're not. Maybe having a maths degree increases your chances of getting a job in the civil service. I don't know, but it would require some investigation. And then I've got two down here, which are to do with the large data set. So my first event is TR recorded for rainfall in Camborne. TR meaning trace, which is less than 0 0.05 millimetres of rain as a bit of a reminder there. And the second event is the average temperature, sorry, the mean temperature above 20 degrees in Perth on a particular day. Well, do you think these are going to be related to each other? I don't think they are going to be related to each other. I think these are going to be independent. Uh, they are so far away from each other. I don't think there's any way that the amount of rainfall in Camborne should be affecting the probability of the temperature being above 20 degrees in Perth. So I don't think there's going to be any relationship. I think they're independent. And then my last one I've got down here, I've got the daily total rainfall above, um, the event A is that the daily total rainfall will be above six millimetres in Leaming in 1987. And the second one is that the daily mean total cloud cover is above six octaves in Leaming in 1987. Okay, so a quick reminder, the octaves are how much of the sky is covered. Six octaves means six out of eight of the sky, six out of eight sections of the sky is covered by a cloud. So I think there's probably going to be a relationship between these two things, that the amount of, if, the, if there's a day where the rainfall is above six millimetres in Leeming, I think there's probably a chance that the cloud cover is going to be greater than six octaves, because rainy days are probably cloudy days as well. So I think these are going to be related to each other. I think they're dependent, and so they would not pass this test that I've got up here for them being independent. That's why I've put them as crosses, because I don't think these ones would pass the test. This one here would require investigation. We would want to know about the probabilities of A and B and find out if they passed this independence test. Okay, so we will do in a second an example and some, um, some other practice of these two.